This episode of Tour the World is brought to you by Evergreen Tours, a world of discovery. And Antler, the champions of lightweight luggage. G'day there and welcome to Tour the World. Real people, real travel experiences. Now, we join Aussie tour groups travelling to some of the world's most beautiful destinations. And this week, we don't have to go very far from home. We're a guest of Evergreen Tours on their Tasmanian Spectacular. It's our very own pint-sized piece of paradise the big five for this tour and we feel the cultural heartbeat of Hobart at the Salamanca Arts Centre. Tassie cuisine is exceptional and a chocoholics delight. We get in touch with our inner convict at the Port Arthur historic site. Experience a shopping purple patch at the Bridstow Lavender Farm. And relaxing on our luxury coach is a great way to travel. Our 10-day Tassie tour takes off from Hobart. We travel down the Tasman Peninsula to explore our convict past at Port Arthur. Then on to beautiful Bichano and historic Launceston. Next stop, spectacular Cradle Mountain, Stanley and Strawn. To experience the wild and woolly West Coast. The tour finishes back in Hobart, home to the famous Salamanca Markets. With Hobart the only Aussie city to make Lonely Planet's top 10 cities to visit in 2013, the eyes of the world are firmly fixed on our smallest state. With a thriving cultural scene, magnificent natural beauty and wildlife, our convict past to uncover and some good old-fashioned hospitality along the way. Tassie has always been a popular touring destination. Evergreen offers a deluxe style of touring and all the key sites are included in the itinerary. And we're on tour, so we're going to need a tour guide. So Susan, you mentioned on the coach that Tasmania is one of Australia's best kept secrets. So what did you mean by that? Best kept secret? I believe it's the best kept secret because of its pristine, untouched parts. It's very beautiful, mm -hmm. very changeable. There's lots of different parts of Tasmania. So what's your favourite part of this tour? What are you looking forward to showing us the most? Things like what's behind us right now. The east coast is absolutely beautiful. You know, the rolling sea is so beautiful and blue and clean. The white beaches, just beautiful. But also, not too many people around. Like, you can have a beach on your own, especially down the east coast. Now, before we get underway, time to cover off a few of the basics. Accommodation on this tour is of a deluxe standard. All hotels are centrally located with excellent amenities and comfortable furnishings. Some properties, like Hadley's Hotel in Hobart, have a colonial past, which adds to the experience. Boutique properties like the Cradle Mountain Chateau are wonderfully integrated into their spectacular natural surroundings. Transport on this tour is by Luxury Coach, driven by Coach Captain Brett. I'm travelling with a full house, but there's plenty of space on board. Most of my fellow passengers are Aussies, and there's a relaxed, friendly feel to the group. It's one of the great things about touring, isn't it? You are travelling with like-minded people. You are, for sure, and it's wonderful to have everything organised for you, where you're taken places and everything's done for you, and you do enjoy it, and you meet a lot of really nice people who are exactly like yourself. And it is wonderful.
Now, we hear a lot about Tassie tree huggers. Of course, Tassie is world famous for its national parks. In fact, some, like Cradle Mountain, are World Heritage listed. Now, the island is actually 21% national park or reserve, and we visit five or six parks during this tour, and that's plenty of time for a little tree hugging all of your own. Oh, there we go. Ooh, ooh that feels good. As we set off up the east coast, we visit the spectacular Tasman Arch and Devil's Kitchen before making our way on to Freycinet National Park. Here we meet Ranger Rachel before setting off on a guided walk around Cape Torval. Tell me, how important are national parks to Tasmania? Really important. Um, they're such, a, such an important way to conserve really beautiful places. They protect our native flora and fauna and enable us to show people around these beautiful places. Fantastic. Now, we've seen some beautiful wildflowers today. Yes. What's the best time of the year to come to, say, Frasier National Park to see the wildflowers? We start seeing orchids um, at sort of, sort of from August um, through September and they change. Every month there's something new coming out. And today the whales yes. were a little bit uncooperative, it has to be said. We <laughs> saw some, but we didn't catch any on camera, unfortunately. Yes. What's the best time of the year to come and see the humpbacks? So humpbacks, they travel north up the coast, um, sort of May and June, and then we start seeing them come back down on their migratory route towards Antarctica from September all the way through to December. On to one of the main attractions here in Tassie, the World Heritage listed Cradle Mountain Lake St Clair National Park and a stop at the stunning Dove Lake at the base of the mountain. Well, we have left civilization well and truly behind us to explore just a tiny little nano section of Tasmania's wild and woolly west coast. Now, some of this area is yet to be explored by modern man. It's remote, it's unspoilt, it's a little mysterious, and it's incredibly spectacular. Boarding the luxurious Lady Jane Franklin in Strawn, we set sail towards the Gordon Wild River and some of Tassie's most impenetrable wilderness. It's a breathtaking three hours, which includes a visit to the Macquarie Harbour entrance. Once on the river, we stop at Heritage Landing for a fabulous guided walk to experience the majesty of the rainforest firsthand. Back on board, we enjoy a delicious buffet lunch on the journey home to Strawn. OK, time to get up close and personal with some of the furry locals here in Tassie at the Bonnarong Wildlife Park. Now, I've been known to throw a tanty or two at the breakfast buffet when there's no birch or muesli, but my breakfast manners are nothing compared to the headline act here at the park. Hello, here you go. Bonnarong Wildlife Park is home to a variety of furry and feathered Aussie critters. Many of them orphans rescued from road accidents and brought to the park to be cared for before being released back into the wild. The majority of the park's funding comes from entry proceeds and it performs a vital role in rehabilitating injured youngsters. There are always hungry mouths to feed, and none more so than the park's feisty Tassie Devils. And as I mentioned, they're not known to politely wait their turn at the breakfast buffet. For some more feathered fun, visit the fairy penguin colony in Bishino. Now, unlike penguin attractions on the mainland, this is small scale and the penguins are free to roam where they like. While the hardworking adults spend their days at sea catching fish, the large demanding chicks remain at home waiting for a feed and will eventually have to be pushed out of the nest. Sounds very Gen Y.
Now, if you wanted to take your very own time machine back to colonial Australia, you wouldn't have to travel much further than this tour of Tassie. There is an incredible collection of colonial buildings, bridges and monuments to explore, including the World Heritage listed Woolmer's Estate, which gives a fascinating insight into daily colonial life. Built by Thomas Archer I in the early 1800s, Woolmer's Estate really does allow you to step back in time. The estate has been meticulously preserved and a visit here is an included activity on this tour. Stroll through the magnificent gardens before enjoying a guided tour of the home. The rooms are largely untouched from the 1800s. On to explore our convict history and the infamous Port Arthur penal settlement. Our visit to fascinating Port Arthur begins with a guided tour of some of the key buildings on the site and some of the history of the penal settlement where more than 12,000 convicts were sent between 1830 and 1877. The birdsong and peaceful stillness of Port Arthur today seems strangely at odds with its violent past. There's plenty of time to wander at your own pace and while 300,000 visitors come here every year, you can often feel quite alone as you explore the site. Now, one of the specialties here at Port Arthur was solitary confinement. So if you were particularly bad, you got sent to the separate prison and you were deprived of all human contact. But not only that, have a look at this. You got to wear a set of these. Here we go, that goes in there. But even if you could escape, there was nowhere to run to. This place is virtually an island and coming from England, most convicts couldn't swim. Well, just describe what you saw at Port Arthur. I think the thing that had the most effect was the, the punishment building. That was eerie. That was so eerie. When you go in there and the way it's set up and you can actually, there's sound effects. I could hear a man coughing and things like that, you know. It was wonderful. Interesting, informative, yeah. So it was back on Anzac Day in 2006 when the small town of Beaconsfield, north of Launceston, hit the world headlines for all the wrong reasons. Miners Todd Russell and Brant Webb were trapped underground following a mining accident and their colleague Larry Knight unfortunately died during the accident. Now the tour does give you the opportunity to visit the Beaconsfield Mine and Heritage Centre. It's a great opportunity to learn more about their great escape, but also a hundred years of mining history at this site. And it's unlikely anyone will ever forget the moment Russell and Webb walked free and finally clocked off at the end of their ordeal. Ah, time to talk Tassie cuisine. And these Taswegians are a lucky bunch. Fabulous cool climate wines like Pinot Noirs, Chardonnays and Rieslings and fresh produce of every description. Now all breakfasts and most dinners are included and this is a tantalising tour for the taste buds. Cheers. Prepare to be wowed by the Tucker Inn Tassie. It is exceptional, with most ingredients grown locally and much of it exported to clamouring world markets. What have you thought of the food on this trip? Well, I was warned before I came to Tasmania, the food will be great. Well, it's lived up to it. It's fantastic. Everywhere we've gone, we've been fed well. Very, very tasty tour, isn't it? Yes, you eat your way across Tasmania. All right, now there are two very important things in life, chocolate and cheese. And this morning I get to indulge in both of them, both products of Tasmania, starting at the House of Amber's Chocolate Factory. And if you're wondering why I'm hurrying, it's because that means more time to enjoy the chocolate. Come on. 
Now, when Forrest Gump's mama said life is like a box of chocolates, she was almost certainly talking about Tassie. Lift the lid and you will find a tempting array of delicious delights around every corner. And I make the most of the opportunity to try as much chocolate as I possibly can. On to the Ashgrove Cheese Factory for another tempting tasting. But first we learn more about the cheese making process and there's the opportunity to view the factory in operation. But let's face it, the tasting is what we're all here for. And once again, I don't hold back. Now, even though this is a packed tour, there is always time to squeeze in a little retail therapy. And I'm going to be a little bit controversial here. I'm going to go so far as to say Australia's best markets are just a stone's throw from your Hobart Hotel. Welcome to Salamanca. Your tour will arrive back in Hobart on Friday so that you can visit the fabulous Salamanca market on Saturday morning. The market offers fine Tasmanian textiles, handmade paper goods, clothing, cosmetics and more. You name it, it's here to be discovered every Saturday morning in Salamanca Place. Lavender has always been a big part of the tourist experience right here in Tassie, with fields carpeted in purple. But you need to be here during December and January to see it in full bloom. Nevertheless, you can have the full lavender experience right here at the Bridstow Lavender Farm. I'm taking home the gourmet lavender honey, I've got the lavender tea, I've got the lavender fridge magnet and pen, and I'm rounding it off with some lavender ice cream. Oh, yum. How would you like to win an amazing touring package? Well, here's your chance from Tour the World. This fabulous prize includes a $1,000 voucher towards a tour for two people from Evergreen Tours, a world of discovery. A stylish set of three drive light luggage cases from Antler, the champions of lightweight luggage. A selection of Go Travel products to help you get the most from your travel experience and a men's holiday wardrobe to the value of $500 from Uberman. Contemporary urban looks and uncompromising quality. Just tell us in 25 words or less where you'd like to tour to and why. Visit tourtheworld.com.au The Salamanca waterfront has always been home to a colourful community. But ex-convicts, sailors and smugglers have long since departed and the arts community have moved in. So Rosemary, tell me a little bit about the art scene here in Tassie, because I believe it's flourishing. A lot of the uh, artists and, and arts activists, community members that supported the arts, got behind the making of, of the art centre. And that meant that there were opportunities for artists to start to work, to sell their wares. There's theatre here, we have the Peacock Theatre. Another theatre in town is the uh, Theatre Royal. Then of course there's Mona, and uh, you can catch a ferry out to Mona. They operate uh, six days a week as, as well. The arts are alive and well in regional Tassie too, including the picturesque town of Sheffield, which has turned its fortunes around with the annual International Mural Fest. On to Cradle Mountain and the amazing Wilderness Gallery. The gallery showcases a stunning collection of nature photography and a poignant exhibition on the Tasmanian tiger or thylacine, believed to have become extinct in the 1930s. Um, we have learned a little bit on this trip too about the Tasmanian tiger, which is a very sad story. Isn't it? How did that make you feel? It is very, very sad if we have lost them. As with any endangered species, it's just really sad. But I'm hoping out there somewhere there's a little cluster of them. 
Well said, Faye, and here's hoping. Now, if you think this tour ticks all the boxes on your holiday checklist, then call Evergreen Tours or go online to evergreentours.com. For more episodes of Tour the World, visit our website or track us down on Facebook. Well, sadly, that is all we have time for this week. Just a tempting taste of what's on offer in Tassie. Now, if you have toured around Tasmania, please let us know what you thought on our Facebook page. And we look forward to seeing you tour the world again with us next week. See you then.